So a person can only, only take so much. I'm just a man like anybody else. I've gone through all my trials and tribulations, and I've stood tall, and I've come back from the bottom, and I've ran hard to come back, and I've asked no one to give me a pass or to help me to get where I am today. I worked very hard for all I have. You know, at that point in time, still feeling beat down, beat down, no matter if I run fast or how many races I win. It was, I wanted to go out there and I wanted to do it for the people who really, who really mattered, who really counted on me to go out there and do it. Everything I've been through in my life has made me the character I am today, and it keeps me emotional inside. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Justin damaged the sport. People who love the sport, like myself, it's hard for us to forgive that. There are other people who have damaged the sport as well, and Justin has been treated differently from those people. He hasn't given any apology, and he hasn't sought at all to understand why people feel the way they do about him. När Justin Gatling kom till fridrotts-VM i Peking i fjol gjorde han det som världens snabbaste man det året. Men även som en av sportens mest avskydda. Duellen mellan honom och Usain Bolt målades upp som en uppgörelse mellan gott och ont där Gatling med sin dopningshistorik fick rollen som den stora skurken. När Bolt sedan vann duellerna på både 100 och 200 meter ansåg många att jamaikanen räddat sporten genom att besegra den dopningsdömde Gatlin. I just want everyone to understand that it's not a good person or a bad person. We're all just runners. You know, we're all just out there compete to be able to put food on our table at home just like anybody else who's even watching. You know, this is what we do. We're not superheroes. We're not uh, villains. You know, we're just here to be able to compete and do the talent that we have. And that's what I'm there for. And like anybody else is there for, just to run and compete and be able to have, make a living. But how did you feel like, you know, hearing stuff like Usain Bolt saved the sport, Justin Gatlin damages the sport, you know, stuff I, like that? I don't, you know, I don't read those kind of things. But you got questions during the press conferences, you know, and you, you heard those type I of things. I didn't It's, comment on those things. I mean, do you think people like, do they judge you? Do they still judge you? The... I, don't, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I can't sit at home and wonder who's judging me and not judging me and what they judge me for. I got to be me and focus on running. And that's what I am. I'm a runner. But how much does it affect you, you know, that people have opinions about you? I can't sit at home and worry about opinions, <laughs> like I just said. But I mean, you're human. There's no but. Exactly. I, I'm a human, so I have to focus on what I have to focus on. If I allow them and their opinions to matter in my life, then I'm running for them. I'm not running for myself. And I can't do that. I got to run for me and be the best talent I can be. Han har dömts för dopning vid två tillfällen. Senaste gången 2006 handlade det om testosteron och straffet blev kännbart. Justin Gatlin var tvungen att hålla sig borta från fridrotten i fyra år. Men Gatling gav sig inte. Han gjorde comeback och sen dess varit en av sportens stora dominanter. Men oavsett hur fort Gatling springer kommer han inte ifrån sin historik och frågan om dopning är fortfarande känslig för 34-åringen. Are you against doping? I can sell and pass all that. So you don't want to say no or I'm just here to run like everyone else is here to run and I buy by the laws and rules of what is what is governed to us. I haven't done anything wrong, but at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's become popular to ask Justin Gatlin these kind of questions. And I'm not the poster child of the D word or doping in, or, or offenses, you know what I mean? There's been people who are top star athletes who have tested positive since I've been back. So I don't understand why I have to be the poster child of the situation. And that's unfair to me because I work just as hard and I buy by the rules and I have not had any kind of hiccups since I've been back in the sport. And I've actually ran faster being back than I was away from the sport. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know. Is it envy from, from people or? I wouldn't call it envy. You know, I don't even know what to call it because I don't really focus on it. But at the end of the day, I just want to be me. I want to be Justin, man. You know, and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, they see me on television, they might think that I'm mean, when they see, but that's me in my zone. You know, I'm focused, you know, right then. I only got nine seconds to be the most aggressive, the most um, 
powerful Justin I can be. I've been through my ups and downs. I've been through the dark side. I've, I've had my troubles, my woes, and my stresses. My joy, my life, and what I live for is beyond track and field, you know? And I just want to live, like anybody else should want to live. But they put so much, like, do, they want you to show remorse, you know, uh, to say I'm sorry and everything like I that. I did. It's been documented. Now, the people who decided to suppress those documents has come out since Beijing. But at the end of the day, I have showed, I've written letters to the IWF, and I've showed remorse, and I apologize of unofficial letters. And I've done way beyond that. I've talked to kids. I've done a lot of community services. I went out and talked to kids about anti-doping. And I've given kids uh, jerseys and um, gear that I have that is USA official because I want them to know that with hard work, they can have this too. So when they look at that, don't think about you can't achieve that, you know? And I think that I'm a living testimony of hard work because I had to work from where I had nothing to where I have something now. Oh yeah, it's real quiet. Even with kids here, you, yeah. usually kids are like, ah, but it's real quiet here. Gotta ride it around, you know? Gotta find that core, that balance. This is what they feel like they gotta do. You know, you just stand there, come back, stop, come back, you know? Turn around, it's easy. What has been your biggest lesson in life? I mean, you've been through so much. When you have nothing left in your life, Self-confidence is the strongest thing that you have. And I had to learn that, you know, through the difficult parts of my life, that that's what brought me back to where I was in track and field. I could have walked away. And my mother was like, you don't, you don't owe anybody anything. You don't owe anybody any money. You still have all your medals. You can walk away from the sport and still be just and have success. I was like, no, but that's not who I am. Who I am is a competitor. Who I am is I know that I can be better than what I was in the sport. And I want to come back and I'll show that because I had the self-confidence to do so. But did you ever consider that retiring? <sighs> Man. How close were you to do that? I, I really don't know. You know, I, it was a journey, to, it was a self-journey to find who I was as, as a person. Because, you know, through high school, I went on to college, had a full scholarship. I went from college on to be a professional athlete, had a big contract. So I never had an opportunity as a young, as a young person to really become a man, you know? And so that four years away from the sport, I was able to find out who really Justin Gatlin was and become a man. Because I always was running track and I felt like track was my life. And I had to realize that I have a life outside of track. So that was a really important lesson I learned. The Olympics is, is definitely electrifying. Yeah. The world's watching, especially in 100 meters. I like to say that the world stops for nine seconds. I mean, you have everyone watching the, the 100 meters. So it's one of the most popular events. And to be able to, to be a part of that is an honor. And with your long career, I mean, do, do, uh, if I use the word revenge, well, you know. Would, would it be, be a revenge? Uh, yeah. No, man, I don't think it would be a revenge. You know, at the end of the day, what I think it would be is amazing. The time has been a rough time, you know, but it's been rewarding for me, you know. I remember when I told I wasn't gonna be able to run a Diamond League, now I got three Diamond League trophies. I remember a time I was told I wasn't gonna be able to run with the fastest people in the world, now I'm number one in the world. I'm a fighter. You know, it's, track and field is not just about being fast, it's about having courage and believing in yourself. Because at the end of the day, when you line up, that's all you have is yourself. You in your lane. When it's time to step on that track, it's only you. It's a non coachable moment. So you have to be able to be prepared for that. <laughs>